It was a plan she made no secret of. I have a bold plan to grow the economy through tax cuts and reform. But the execution and fallout led to a record no one wanted. I cannot deliver the mandate on which I was elected by the Conservative Party. The shortest serving UK Prime Minister in history. Mr Speaker, we are at the beginning of a new era. And as we <laughs> contemplate, and as we contemplate... That new and rather short era unveiled at Chancellor Kwasi Kwarteng's now infamous mini-budget with £45 billion worth of unfunded tax cuts that would see the value of the pound plunging to 40-year lows. Silence since October. Today, Liz Truss spoke out in an article for The Telegraph. In 4,000 words, the closest Liz Truss comes to an apology is this. I am not claiming to be blameless in what happened, but fundamentally, I was not given a realistic chance to enact my policies by a very powerful economic establishment, coupled with a lack of political support. Adding, I still believe that seeking to deliver the original policy prescription on which I had fought the leadership election was the right thing to do. I can understand why Liz would want to go out and defend her record, but if you're asking me, did it work? Clearly not, because what you've got to do first is deal with inflation and right. get growth into the economy and deal with the debt and many other priorities for people, like cutting the NHS waiting list and stopping the small boats and all the rest of it. You've got to do all of those right. things in tandem. You can't just go for the... Cut the tax. Cut the tax, though, is exactly what Liz Trust loyalists sitting on Rishi Sunak's back benches think the nation needs. We need a high growth, lower tax economy. Um, you know, Liz's other views about, uh, you know, whether the prescription itself was correctly implemented is a matter for her. But thank you. But you must have an opinion whether or not she got it right or not. Um, well, I, I think no, clearly, mistakes were, yeah, clear, clearly mistakes were made. I think Liz has acknowledged herself in her own article that um, errors were made in relation to the implementation, but I think on the fundamental point about whether we want a low-tax, high-growth economy in the UK, she was correct. People across this country know and understand that there's a little bit too much month and not enough paycheck, and that's what lowering taxes can do for So them. is Rishi Sunak getting much. it wrong? The problem for Rishi Sunak is a significant number of Tories think he is getting it wrong with taxes too high. And his critics may be about to get more outspoken. A warning at the end of Liz Truss's essay that her experience taught me a lot and I will expand upon these lessons I have learned in the coming weeks and months. Well, I caught up with Damien Green, who was former Prime Minister Theresa May's deputy, and I began by asking him what he thought about Liz Truss's claim that a powerful economic establishment was to blame for her demise. I think what brought Liz's government down was the bond market in the end, that they didn't accept that unfunded tax cuts and promises of, sort of more tax cuts in the future uh, could be met without unacceptable levels of government borrowing. But I think the, the overriding point is that, unfortunately, it was actually, and perhaps ironically, the free markets that did for Liz Truss's government. It certainly wasn't the Parliamentary Party. Would you like her to have been a bit more apologetic, though, given all the havoc she's caused? I mean, we're all paying more for our mortgages for a start. Well, it, I mean, it was a, a, a bad period, um, and, and you know, the government, in the end, uh, failed, uh, and, and you know, we, we have to admit that and move on. I think what I'm... Uh, well, should she have been a bit more apologetic? Well, uh, that's that's a matter of her. I, I, I don't want to look backwards. I genuinely want to say, you know, what can the Conservative Party do now uh, to recover? And I think, you know, we have to agree on two basic things. One, that, of course, we're all, all Conservatives want tax cuts and, and deregulation and, and what was in her agenda. But what we need to learn is that you need to earn the right to, to have tax cuts and to do that you need the public finances under control, you need inflation under control and that's what the government's trying to do now with a view to having all the tax cuts that we all want. But her point was lower taxes now to stimulate growth sooner. Well, uh, tax cuts that uh, the markets won't accept clearly don't uh, advance growth. What they do um, is push interest rates up and have emergency economic measures that actually reduce confidence in the ec economy and therefore reduce growth. You know, of course we want growth and of course that needs to include deregulation but you can't just have tax cuts whenever you want them. How problematic do you think Liz Truss's intervention is for Rishi Sunak now? Well I think um, it, it is it is 
perfectly proper and sensible to have a, a debate, but it's got to be conducted uh, in the right terms. And we have to remember in the end that the Conservative Party isn't a debating society. Uh, it's a political party that is running a country at the moment and wants to carry on doing so for some years to come. So to do that, what the government does is much more important than what any backbencher says. Is that coalition now too hard to keep together? Because if you look at the Sunday Telegraph leader that accompanied the Liz Trust piece, for example, it says the party is now a left-right coalition incapable of pushing through free market reforms too many of its MPs no longer believe in. So is this party ungovernable? Well, the Conservative Party has always been a coalition, and it has to be. We have a first-past-the-post electoral system where you win elections and get into government by assembling a coalition of many millions of voters. Now, is that coalition now so broad and so divided that it's impossible to bring together? I don't think it is, because I, I disagree with this idea that you know, there are Conservatives that don't care about, about deregulation and, and growth and so on. That, that's just a caricature. That's just not true. You know, we may have a reasonable debate about how best to get to where we all want to get. But I think the debate needs to be framed as that rather than uh, this, this, this slight feeling that you know, there's, a, there's a betrayal going on. That, that's, that, I think, is nonsense. Well, Liz Truss's article is not the only noises off for Rishi Sunak at the moment. He's got an avalanche of bullying allegations against Dominic Raab, his deputy. Dominic Raab denies those allegations, but should he stand aside while they're investigated? No, I think due process um, should, should take its course. I think you know, there's clearly an investigation going on. Let's wait and see to the end of that investigation. You've worked very closely with Dominic Raab yourself. Have you ever seen any problems with his management style? Well, I, I've never found it so. I can only speak as I, I find it personally. I've always found Dominic perfectly uh, courteous and, and, and decent to deal with. He's never lost his rag? No, and, and, and as I say, uh, I think everyone uh, deserves proper due process. Damien Green, thanks very much.